principle with liberty and justice for all. Opportunity. I'll be very quick. My name is uh, Alex Lee. I'm the lead uh, public involvement specialist for the NDOT US 31 quarter study. So I just wanted to give uh, the commissioners here tonight uh, an update uh, on the study and then answer any questions. Likewise, I have my colleague on the 30 uh, West Group, uh, Brett Lackey, here tonight also to answer any questions. He's on the northern uh, portion of Fulton County uh, heading into. Uh, Marshall and then over on thir uh, 30 towards uh, Valparaiso. So uh, just real quick, um, the, uh, there is a study ongoing that you may or may not have heard. Uh, there are four studies that are ongoing. Um, the study that like I mentioned is the 31 North study I'm gonna talk about tonight. It's a 27 mile corridor going down into Miami County, Eel River, County Road 300 in Miami, up to County Road 700. Uh, northern limits just north here, uh, north of Rochester. Uh, 27 mile corridor that NDOT is studying. Likewise, Brett's uh, corridor is up through Argus and heads to the west on 30 uh, 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 towards Valpo. And there's a study team uh, heading on 30 east to the Ohio line and a study team to the south going down to Hamilton County. So uh, four concurrent studies that are ongoing uh, 165 total miles of study corridors, uh, just for your information. So uh, what is this? This is a, a PEL. This is a planning environment linkage study. Uh, it is something uh, newer to NDOT. Uh, this is a collaborative process. So this PEL study kind of brings uh, the public stakeholders uh, elected officials, locals, and other stakeholders involved early on in the process. Uh, for instance, last year we were down the street at Rochester High School in a visioning session about what are some concerns uh, that the public and stakeholders have about the 31 quarter. What we heard uh, from that visioning session, then we kind of came up uh, with a draft needs and purpose of the study. Uh, that being said, um, like I mentioned, that process does provide feedback early. These four PEL studies that NDOT is doing uh, are the second, is the second uh, PEL study within the state. Uh, I was involved in the first PEL study uh, three on, going on four years ago in Lake County, uh, 8094 Borman Expressway uh, PEL study. A lot more challenges, as you may or may not know, driving up in that corridor in the regions heading into uh, Illinois. Uh, that's now in the next process of, of environmental phase called the NEPA phase, the National Environmental Policy Act phase uh, for that um, uh, study slash project. So the, that Borman study, uh, our recommendations came out of it and from there uh, NDOT is moving forward uh, based on those recommendations. Uh, what we heard um, from the last uh, set uh, like I mentioned, we gathered a lot of feedback. Uh, as of June, we had uh, 170 comments that we received, uh, 261 community participants. The majority that we heard is basically mobility. 55% that we heard is of mobility, 21% about safety, 7% uh, about region statewide, and 7% economic development, 1% other. So the main thing is about getting to and from up and down 31. Definitely heard from uh, the schools here, Rochester, North Miami schools, uh, EMS services here in uh, Rochester, Abenavi, and then down uh, Mexico, Denver, Macy, Fire. Their concerns about getting access to the West. Likewise, as we're moving forward uh, with those recommendations, we took a look at a quick brush of safety, uh, so crash, Safety, so what we see here in this graphic is kind of a density of crashes. As you can see in this dog leg right by Rochester, a lot more incidents of crashes. 
and then down here heading towards uh, Denver, Mexico, a lot more frequency of crashes. That middle part uh, heading into uh, Rochester and then down uh, to, to Miami County, a lot lesser so in terms of that crash uh, density. So folks um, in pretty um, severity of crashes, they also analyze, and this data is available uh, on our website at uh, propelus31.com. So based on that, those comments, safety, uh, access, we came up with the needs and purpose of the study. Basically, like I mentioned, improve roadway safety in the corridor at the intersections along 31, uh, access control issues and challenges, and then likewise, like I mentioned, the mobility, cross highway connectivity with that EMS and, and schools and other stakeholders, and then lesser so in terms of that region-wide and statewide mobility. For instance, talking with uh, down in Mexico, the manager of Manel's, the granary down there, you know, they had the winter wheat come in in July, but now they, they're storing it. They ship it up to 31 to, to Southern Michigan for processing. So they use 31 coming into Mexico, then, but then they get them back up 31 to go to Southern Michigan for processing. So um, the next steps, uh, kind of where we're heading, uh, like I mentioned, uh, we have, and this is just a, the base graphic, uh, the, the universe of alternatives. So based on the needs and purpose of the, the study, we look at uh, the, what we call the, the do nothing. So basically the no build uh, alternative to uh, all different types of different, whether it's uh, uh, grade separated, um, uh, like 14 over, full interchange like 25 here in Rochester. So we're looking at all these different alternatives based on those needs and purpose of that study. We'll come back uh, probably in the next few weeks back out to the public, not in a meeting forum, but we'll notify our stakeholders that uh, we kind of gathered those uh, alternatives uh, and pared them down into kind of bunches. We'll come back to the public late winter, early spring and pare it down a little bit more and then get feedback from the public based on the alternatives, ranges of alternatives, and then we'll go into the uh, summer and finalize the study next fall. So that, um, just for your information, a lot of folks say, well then in 25 outs, are you gonna have to start building something or some kind of safety uh, issue? Uh, NDOT will then evaluate those recommendations from each of the study partners. And then from there, they will have to prioritize based on those four quarters uh, that I mentioned uh, what needs that they need for Fort Wayne District. Here is LaPorte District, but uh, Fort Wayne, uh, we touch part uh, down in the southern quadrant, the Fort Wayne District. And then from there, they have a five-year cycle, just like for your, your projects throughout the county, you have your cycle. So uh, nothing in immediate, because then in 24, which equates to 25, then they got a five-year cycle to prioritize those recommendations. So just want to temper uh, expectations from from you all and, and the public. Uh, give Brett a minute or two, or just to talk about the shirt thirty one shirt thirty west. Sorry, absolutely. So uh, my name is Brett Lackey. I'm from called CDM Smith. Um, I'm a consultant project manager for the US thirty west corridor, um, which you know, as was mentioned starts in Valparaiso, extends east to Beach Road um, in Marshall County, and also includes um, a segment of US thirty one from US 30 down to County Road Center. So um, very small um, part of our study area is in Fulton County. Um, the, the two major intersections are County Road 700 North and State Road 110. Um, and as you're aware, there are planned, and that does have planned projects for both of those locations in uh, quarter four of 2027. Um, that said, um, we certainly um, are, would, would like to hear any recommendations or suggestions or comments um, from Fulton County um, about how you know, um, the Pell study might uh, produce recommendations or concepts to tie into those two locations. Um, but obviously, as we move forward with our alternatives of development process, um, you know, any alternatives or concepts that come out of that will, will be planned around those two, the, the new bridge and the new interchange at those locations, as well as the new interchange at State Road uh, 10, a little bit further north. So, um, Otherwise, really everything that Alex said is, is pretty consistent with our study area as well. Um, we heard a lot of the same comments up, up in uh, 30 West as, as, as in this study area. Um, and so we're, 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 we're 
dealing with some of the same issues, we're doing a lot of the same comments, and, and we're on the same schedule as far as how this, this study will play out. So um, I believe that's that's about it uh, that I've already had. So. The 700 North and 110, has that been designed yet? When will that be designed? Or, or you said it was going to start in 27, is that what you said? My understanding is construction in quarter four of 2027. So there are I, quarter four, so that'd be fall of 27. Right. So yes, yeah, right. So okay. as far as design, um, you have no. I'm not sure what percent design they are. They would be those. in design now. But yes. I don't think they're okay. completed yet. It, so. When they were done designing, can we have a look at them? I mean, is that public? Can, can oh sure. Yeah. Would you yeah, would you absolutely. please contact us so we could sure be yeah. aware? Of, you know. Absolutely. Yep. 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 Um, either myself or, or the project manager from the Indi district. Yeah, uh, that would be the four, out of the four Wayne district because those uh, projects 700. Uh, overpass uh, 110, like Brett mentioned, will be an interchange, and then 10 in August will also be an interchange. So that will be managed uh, out of the Fort Wayne District. I'm sorry, the Port District. That will be the Port district. district, not Fort Wayne District. The Port District, and uh, that is separate from the study. So we're aware of it. We know that we're that that's coming, uh, and so that's not kind of part of our study. But we just know that we will have to kind of uh, account for that and tie that in. If that makes sense. Yeah, sure. yeah, they pulled all that out, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Any questions or comments or concerns uh, from commissioners? When will they begin to put designs together for 700 North going south in Miami County for this general area? Any so, projection on that? Yeah, so right now everything's on the table, uh, like, like I mentioned, so nothing's been uh, set in stone so to speak. So we're bringing you along as we're kind of moving along, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so definitely, I think it would behoove us to come back um, probably late winter before the public information meeting, so then you're apprised prior to the public. Uh, that would probably be my recommendation to you, uh, the commissioners here. So, but no, I, you know, our other stakeholders, and we do have a stakeholder advisory committee that has stood up for our study uh, corridor, as, as well as Brett's uh, corridor and the other two. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate, appreciate the opportunity, it. and I'll, I'll leave some fact sheets for the other public if you want up, up here, it's not a problem. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thanks for the update. Okay, we have uh, Heather's on that. for the proposed zone map amendment um, from approximately four acres from intensive use to ag located on 4866 old us 31 to be part of Hamill's record service um, they just proposed to rezone four acres because they can't build homes on intensive use and his daughter and son-in-law or vice versa wants to build a home out there so we'd like to change the four acres to ag district to be able to build a home and the Planning Commission made the recommendation on August 28th. So. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Or mm -hmm. Pretty much the way she said it. They came in and wanted to build a home on the family property and they couldn't do it. So. Any other concerns from the Okay. I have a. Uh, I think so. Okay, then uh, we have a request for the zone map amendment uh, for John Hamill. Uh, I have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Uh, um, any other discussion? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Good evening, sir, and everyone. Thank you for letting me be here tonight. I won't take too much time. Wes has already done a hang up job in the paper for us and a while back. I appreciate that. But uh, we uh, can't thank you enough for being our supporters in the past and certainly hope that you continue, continue to ride the waves with us. We've um, got the numbers there in front of you now to interpret what that says at the bottom without, without a lot of headings so I can get it all on one page. We've had a 20% increase this year across all five counties. Um, I'm gearing in on that total referred line. We're up from 141 to 177 referrals. If you look across that each county is listed there and it's comparing on the left last year's numbers to on the right this year's numbers. And we do these from about July 1st to July 1st. So we've you know, changed a little bit since July 1st of this year. But to put a stake in the ground, and so we always compare apples to apples. Fulton County uh, compared to uh, last year was at 11 referrals, this year at 15. We are at 8% of the referral base. Um, we feel it an honor to be here and to serve those clients who are above, as you can see in the numbers of exact appointments, we've gone from four to six, and we have one death this year. We've um, helped and completed six cases this year, and if my math's not wrong, that'll add up to the 15. Um, that looks like 13, so where's my other two? Oh, we have two, uh, two cases pending down at the bottom, so 12 and 13, and two cases pending at the bottom there is 15. And I do believe we've received a couple more in from one of the nursing homes. So we are busy, busy. We uh, have, uh, with growth goes our cost. Our budget this year that I've calculated out is 236000 right sheet here, it's right behind, $236,280. As you know, we're a nonprofit that we have to go out and collect every penny that we and in this budget and that we you know, serve the communities with. If uh, I had to proportion that out, because I always ask, how do you think of your numbers? Well, you know, the first year or two, it was a guess. And uh, it was easy because I was the only one. But now we're, we're up well over uh, the course of the years, going on our seventh year, and uh, nearly 200 uh, people served by us. Um, we have a little bit more number, so if you take that $236,000 budget and you take your 8%, again on the right county here, your 8% would be 18880 or our three major contributors from Fulton County, that'd be $6,293, part, part of the piece of the slice of the pie, if you will. Uh, we're here asking for $5,000 uh, for 2024, which is what we asked for last year. We appreciate that very much. We're going to keep trying to widen and broaden our scope of our donors. We're working on that to go to the next level, levels down, always have, but it's a slow process, um, as well as diversifying our funds, and we're striving to get started in endowment by the end of the year. That'll be slow in getting back, but at least now we're trying to cover all the bases. So if you would, um, to keep us going and to serve the community, we would if you could support us with $5,000 for this next year. And that'll come out of next year's budget. We got that budget in there. Mm -hmm. Should we do an hour wait till they decide the budget to make sure they don't cut that out of our budget during budget hearings? Or just go ahead and do it? I mean, I, I'm just asking the question. Yeah. Just because we submitted it, that don't mean that the you know, we ain't got a submitted budget, so we don't know for sure, but it's in there, yeah. Yeah, we can do planning. It should be a month we ought to have that all taken care of, right? October? Yeah, yeah, so. That'd be great, but the intent is in The intent, it's awesome. in our budget. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So, so if a budget passes, then we're good. That sounds great. We really appreciate it. You might think about next year, I, I hope we can keep it there, especially given your percentage is smaller than the other four counties, and given we are trying to diversify. But I am trying to give everyone heads up that not only have we grown, but as everyone feels, the, the costs and the expenses have gone up. So, uh, But we'll try to hold it down as much as we can. 
uh, I hope to give you an update by the end of first quarter. I didn't make it this year, but I hope to this next year so you have a better feel for that. Okay. And Christina, and I have, um, if it makes it any easier, of course I've got it gave you today. You don't have to use this, but this is just a pledge later. There's two copies. Um, we're electronically finally on match. Uh, rent again this year, so the less pages like from your minutes and that's like kind of just a short one page okay. of a pledge. Okay, that works. Sure. All right. Thank you much, folks. Thank, Thank you. All the support. Thank you. Projects. The first round they completed those, those have been paved and striped. Um, that was your fourth from the south, your 1600 east over there by Disco, and then uh, your 650 east, or the Fort Wayne Road up to 500 north. Those are all completed. And then uh, the last I heard they was going to start at the end of this month on your 450 north. Bridge there for a uh, canoe the other day. Uh, they're ahead of schedule on that by a few days. So, you know, good rain could set them back again, but uh, they're going to be pouring <coughs> concrete on the end walls here later this week. Uh, they're getting home pretty good. Uh, they'll be done with harvesting. <laughs> <laughs> for the late harvesters, yes. <laughs> Yeah, if you're not in a big hurry, they'll be done by harvest. <laughs> you know, the guys that are harvesting around Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they are moving along pretty good. 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 Uh, one of the things, you know, we had those voids on the south side where the plates the, on the approaches would move all the time. Found out why that is. There was a drain tile that went up underneath those and brought it out and every time the river would flood it flood up there in the drain tiles and suck sand and gravel out from underneath those. So, of course that's all being addressed and everything but it was interesting so um, that's pretty much it. 
very neat. Um, it did send you uh, appraisals uh, for some right of way, Bridge 161. Uh, if you had a chance to look those over, Holly. Um, yes, sir. And uh, yeah, insurance letter. The, everything was correct okay. in the contract. If all that uh, looked uh, good for you, the way I seen it, it looked like you just needed a signature from me. To That's correct. Home. That's what I saw. Uh, if you guys are good at that, I'll send that back. Yeah. What was it, $2,700? It's not $2,200. It's just for a few feet of right away along this for guardrail. <coughs> Yep, I'm good with it. I don't know if we need a motion for those. Or... Well, the caller can wish to prove the, uh, the uh, right, right purchase for right away. So he's right away purchase for the $2,250. So moved. Second. Okay. And the only other thing I got for you tonight was uh, just a transfer request. Uh, and that's just for $40,000 back earlier. Um, year uh, we had for bridge 32 and 50 we moved forty thousand dollars over from one and then we correct funds later in the year to zero out the accounts so we gotta move that money back so just kind of put it back so we can after we adjust the claims so that's all that is so now that I don't have it anything else okay. Okay. Well, thank you well, thank you John yeah. thank you the director of the State Board of Accounts, Paul Joyce, had sent a directive out about property tax collection and postmark dates on envelopes as they come in. They wanted us to create a departmental policy about postmarks on envelopes because it's getting to the point that more people are using postage machines like we do, which you can manipulate the dates to show what you want. So all this is, is a, like I said, it's a departmental policy for my department, but it's giving, I'm just giving it to you for an FYI information and for it to be part of the public meeting minutes that the, there's a departmental policy. Um, and it just states what's acceptable, what's not acceptable as far as postmark dates and how they're handled as whether they're considered on time or delinquent payments. Um, the only other thing I have is we had our tax sale last Monday. We had 113 parcels offered for sale, which is the smallest tax sale we've had yet. We did sell 25 of them. So certificate of sale next spring will have only 88 parcels offered. Well, good deal. So that's scheduled to be a positive. Uh, so, other than that, that's all I have. And this, so your meter mail, what, five days? And if if we, if we receive an envelope from the U.S. Postal Service or from, which has got meter mail, it doesn't have meter mail. It, it, the biggest thing is if we receive it with mm. no postmark whatsoever. Because we've had times when we've gotten letters from the U.S. Postal Service, no cancellation stamp on it. So then it, we have to go back to when did we receive it, which we mark all our envelopes as we receive it. It doesn't have a date. We mark with our stamps in the office what the date was that we received it. And then it's a five-day grace period from the 10th, either May 10th, November 10th, whatever the due dates happen to be. But that's the determination and so that's why <coughs> so creating a policy that we have a policy in place of how to handle those situations. So if they have a stamp and it is stamped 
on and by the date to do it, but the metered <coughs> mail is... Metered mail, it depends, because even if, like I said, somebody can manipulate the date and put May 10th yeah. on it or November 10th, Those so we would don't receive it until May 20th, May 30th, well, it's down those five days. Okay. So we can now consider it. So those are, those are the ones that are in trouble, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And that's just like I said, the Department of Policy okay. that this is how it's handled. This is what the way it's going to be. And it's got, like I said, it's got the IC codes. And this is a directive that Paul Joyce had sent out. So with okay. the help of some other treasurers, that's the policy we created. So other than that, Everything's done. Okay. So, getting ready to start collecting fall tax. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. Good travel, sure. <laughs> Just for me. Thank you. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot at all. Um, I emailed the reports out on Friday. Is there any questions over any of those? It's a pretty nine months and things have been pretty quiet so um, this morning we've got a, we had 106 inmates we're holding 10 for Howard County 30 for Wabash County uh, one federal and then five DOC inmates which is eligible, eligible for reimbursement um, yeah, other than that hopefully our, our last topic was supposed to be built the first of the month hopefully it was off the line and on its way before the strike so if not, I have no idea expectations on that. So, um, other than that, I don't have any unless you guys have any questions. Thank you, Charles. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, I did. I'm trying to avoid you. I'm not The narrow banding and so forth with the VHF issues we have. So that's uh, working pretty well. And then if their local 800 doesn't work, they will utilize the statewide pipe and so forth when they do the transport. And that um, when they go out of range and out of county. So statewide is obviously what it means is statewide. But that's all we've uh, done for 911. And implementing that in a week in time, it seems like I'm with you guys 24 7, so it's hard for me to support new business. But on the other hand, last week was kind of like EMA week. Um, some grants were due, like the EMPG grant um, and what we do for the year and so forth. So some of that stuff was already handled back in June and July. I reached out to them just to look that over last week to make sure I wasn't missing anything. And I have yet to hear from them, which is kind of odd. So I'll reach out to them again. And then the HEMP grant, um, I'm the project developer on the Intelligrants for Fulton County. So I was the only one allowed to implement that HEMP grant. I did put the six thousand dollars in there for um, our LAPC, and um, last week was our quarterly part meeting and LAPC meeting. We had a few guests there that talked about a certain house bill for the lit and uh, for the volunteer fire department. So we will be looking that lit was strictly for volunteer fire departments. Yeah. Oh, that's not okay. That's no. So um, I don't think. All the volunteers know everything that's happening with the funds and so forth. So they'll, they may be visiting you or asking questions, but sure. Dave was there. Um, mm -hmm. And it made sense why they were asking and so forth to help them out. And um, they were privileged and part of the ARPA funds last year. 
in the development of getting some of their resources. So um, anyway, just look for them to move forward with that. So technically, there's not really anything else besides the EMS that uh, is a change. Um, I believe we can say the three individuals that um, have met or pre Right? Pre approved or, or did, came to the, through the pre proposal, and that's Heartland, Lutheran, and Parkview are the three that will be um, following through to the final stages. So, and that will be on the 19th and 20th. And um, I know we've talked about executive meetings versus uh, public meetings, but in all fairness, if you were interviewing, I'm not too sure. But we need to decide so we can send those uh, meeting reminders out to the group. If you want those interviews uh, private, and Holly, I believe if you do have a private one, one commissioner can be in that meeting, mm -hmm. correct? Just one. Mm -hmm. So, um, in the interview, and there was a selection of, I believe, seven from the big public meeting that we had. So just, just for reference, on October 16th, we open the bed letter commissioners. That's and correct. then the 19th and 20th, we will uh, do, the do, do the interviews to interview the, hopefully the three bidders and find out what what fits both count the best. Right, and then um, after those, uh, everybody will be delegated, you know, to look up references and do their homework and um, a joint effort to who's the best for Fulton County. But it is made up of, uh, so everybody knows, the East, West, and some of the public sector, and us on that EMS board. Maybe the representatives from those territories. So. Yeah, no, they're just saying something else. No, no, I'm just, <laughs> uh, just to give you an update on what's happening with the coroner's office, um, it's been very quiet lately, which has been very nice because last month was very busy. Uh, we had like 10 uh, total calls in just a month. So, so far this month, uh, nothing has additionally transpired. So, so far uh, we've had 50 calls this year, 50 families that we have assisted. Of that, 29 men and 21 uh, females. Fulton County deaths, uh, effective till noon today at least, is 138 total deaths. And of that, 70 men and 68 ladies. So I want you to know that uh, our percentage has dropped a little bit from 38% to 36% on deaths investigated in Fulton County of all those who passed away. So, uh, but we're still really higher than most of our surrounding counties and counties across the state were higher. Um, of that, Is there any reason why? I mean, that's, uh, 
I don't know. Is that way or is that just a? It's issue? well. Usually we were right between 32 and 34 percent for the last several years, and it may drop back down toward the end of the year. But it was like up to 38 percent in the last couple months. And it, the only thing I can think is maybe some of our citizens don't go to the doctors often, or they wait too long to go. Um, sometimes then passing away, like in the emergency room, something like that. So that's what I've noticed or what seems to be, but I can't say that that's a scientific fact, okay. but that's what I think. Um, so far we've had uh, one indetermined and it should be, uh, let's see, yeah, a 43 natural and six accidental deaths. Um, nothing has really changed on our accidental deaths. Uh, you can see that we have some drug overdoses um, that have occurred or have been um, intermingled with other types of circumstances that surrounded the death. Um, our procedures, we've had six autopsies, so we have added one of those. Um, no, we haven't. It's the labs that we've added one to. We had to test a gentleman for um, glucose and then troponin, and that was submitted and completed out at Woodlawn Lab. So we've had 11 labs, that's one additional, and then our toxicology has remained the same. We've had 15, um, nine of those we've performed and sent in for uh, information to the state to access labs, and then six were done with autopsies. You can see our monthly frequencies then uh, here. Uh, we've had uh, six in January and four families in February, March, and April. In May, we had uh, 14 calls, and when we had those calls, they were like 14 calls in about 16 days. So it was very concentrated. Um, in June, we had two, July, six families, and August, again, it's kind of raised up a little bit to 10, and then so far, uh, nothing um, for this month. Um, I also, you'll see attached there from the Indiana State Department of Health, it's a new drug that um, seems to be coming to prominence or coming to light, and they're alerting, they're alerting all law enforcement, first responders, and clinicians about this. And the drug's called uh, Romazolam, and that's a designer drug. It's got several different uh, nicknames or slang terms, like Xanax, fake Xanax, dope. Um, it's frequently used with other drugs, most commonly opioids, fentanyl, so naloxone should be administered if an overdose is suspected. Um, this was originally invented back earlier in the 70s for medicinal purposes, but now it didn't really ever gain much prominence in the United States because it wasn't legally appearing, so it wasn't used. But then all of a sudden it serviced in 2019 and so they've been starting to track that since that time. Um, also of importance, just as I scanned over the article I gave you, um, our overdose signs and symptoms. Uh, Romazolum, like many other uh, novel or designer uh, drugs, have adverse effects which can give you loss of coordination, drowsiness, dizziness, blurred vision, slurred speech, muscle relaxation, respiratory depression and amnesia, and then sometimes death. Um, so as I mentioned before, many times you can find those mixed in with opioids, and that's one thing they've noticed. When we send in, there's over uh, 300 drugs. That's just the Indiana State Department of Health uh, panel that they'll do complimentary. If we feel like we need more, then, uh, then we have to pay for those. And so far, everything we've sent in has been covered under that. But uh, it's very important that naloxone is used, and I wanted to remind you that back on March 29th of this year, that can be now purchased over the counter. So it's an over the counter uh, combatant for uh, drug overdoses. So hopefully that's helping. And I know around the county we have several locations that it can be obtained, especially like the Recovery Cafe, but I know that maybe other the smaller <coughs> towns have places you can get that as a resource. So I wanted to let you know that. 
Um, wanted to remind you or let you know that I'll be traveling to Indianapolis uh, Friday for the Corners Training Board uh, fall meeting. It's a quarterly meeting. Uh, and I wanted to let you know I'm real proud. Um, on November 8th, um, Margo, our Chief Deputy, has organized and will have um, a group from Indiana University Kokomo coming up. Uh, she's got this forensic center. Of course, that's secured, but the classroom up with the detention center has been uh, secured. And there'll be a lot of radio, radiology technology students, and they'll be coming up to visit us, and um, we're gonna compare and contrast the imaging prospects of forensically versus regular medical. So uh, excited about that. She's gonna lead that, like I say, and she's got it organized, and um, they'll have a tour of the Forensic Center too, as well, because they're very interested in that. So that's an exciting thing, and that's mainly what I have, but I do need to ask one thing, and, and that would be, I'm not sure how to ask for this or if I need to put it in writing, but like an executive meeting that we could um, maybe uh, talk and discuss about trying to get some payments made to the deputies. Sure. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, well, who do you want to with? Yeah, All of us? Or who, 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 who do you want to Yeah, that would be good. Just like a regular executive like maybe the three of you and Christina. Sure. Do you say yes, we can? Yeah. Is that something that we could do this week, like in the next 48 hours, or? Does it count that we're on TV now? Did you say you was out of town Friday? Yes. Friday's out. Okay. Morning, afternoon, morning. whichever's. Okay. okay. All right. We'll put a thing. I'll see how we're going to get. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, we have the Lano South Lead Lake Conservancy District. Um, they had a group put together to do some scoring on this um, grant application. And uh, this recommendation is from that group, so we have to approve the hiring of um, their recommending us hire Jones Petrie. And uh, Raf Skinsky. Uh, so that's that's a firm that come out on top of the, the group and their scoring. So, do we have any questions on that? This is a uh, like so recommendation coming from that group. This is we're not hiring, I mean, we're hiring we're through the process, but it's the group wants that. So, okay. Any other questions for anyone? Hearing that, I will uh, entertain a motion to approve the uh, Jones Petrie and Rapids. So moved. Second. Yeah, all in favor? That motion carries 3 0. That's all well. So, okay. We have the travel request. Have you guys seen those? Any questions, concerns? Or? Um, no, I don't think I've seen them. Okay. I entertain a motion to approve those. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Motion carries 3 0. Okay, we have uh, minutes from uh, September 5th. Is there any corrections? Concerns? Good to see you. Okay. Okay, entertain okay, motion to approve the September 5th minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay, we have the executive session for September 5th. Okay, minutes for that, and the motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. All fair. Okay. 
you guys have a chance to look over the claims, any concerns, corrections? I didn't see any. Okay, we have uh, payroll, 98, $258,754.91 with a deduction amount of $94,406.60. Okay, I've got an insurance docket for uh, the disbursements for 810 to 816 at $8,539.49. I have an insurance docket for the disbursements for 817 to $823 at $1,268.02. Insurance claim docket for the disbursements of 824 to 830, $63,756.88. Insurance claim docket for the disbursements from 831 to 96 of $6,652.63. Insurance claim docket for September fees, $41,296.84. Uh, utility claims, $6,617.41. We've got the lit distribution of $733,013.29. These claims. It's uh, what do you say, Christine? Five hundred dollars shy of that. Yeah, yeah I brought you down the new one. Okay, this is the current one that was in here. Four hundred dollars. Yeah. Once the new four hundred. Okay. Yeah, seven hundred seventy-four thousand four hundred dollars and thirty-eight cents. Right. Mm -hmm. Just don't get the credit card in, right? No. Is it, are we paying the credit card in? Not right. Okay. The change in the docket is my fault. I had have, I have Chantal pull one of my claims out this, this afternoon because I didn't receive exactly what I was paying for, and I certainly wasn't going to pay for it until I received all the product, so I had to pull the claim. Okay. So that's why the difference in docket the docket's changed today okay thank you we've got a transfer request from the assessor from uh, uh, maintenance software to contract at thirteen thousand dollars to cover the agreed upon contract fees for the reassessment through now as alarm services there we go thank you Okay, we have a transfer request from public defender and the uh, expert witness investigation deposition for $3,000 to the English conflict attorney. We have a highway department, $40,000 from bridge 50 to bridge 32. Uh, I'll explain that earlier. Transfer request from the clerk, $400 for postage and machine lease to continuing education. Uh, transfer to continuing education pay for the year, the end of year trainings. certified landscape services and one from uh, Rome Landscape Management to do some landscaping out here front. Uh, I think we will be 
spoke with them in the last meeting. Certified was thirty one hundred and seventy dollars, uh, and Mitch uh, Milton is uh, two thousand six hundred and forty seven dollars and eighty cents. I know there's a difference. Uh, certified has some color stuff. He's going to mimic the courthouse plantings to pull the two buildings together. But I don't think Mitch had the there's bigger plantings in, so that's the difference in the price. As a I know we can talk about how to certify the these two buildings that Mitch and Jim, right? This one we have here has. Notice we need to explain that you're bidding on one half of the ownership of that property. So we need to specifically put that in there, and then they have to be opened at a public. So at a commissioner's meeting. Yes. So what's the time frame to get that? I mean, you just have to give some specifics for that so we can advertise. I can do that. I can do the legal type description and then you guys can go ahead and pick the dates and okay. the minimums. The, the minimums. Is there any guidelines we've got to go by on minimums? It says, and I quote, the disposing agent, which is Fulton County, shall determine a minimum bid for the property based on the appraisals and the disposing agent's knowledge of the property. 
Okay, so our knowledge, of our knowledge of the property, your knowledge of the property is they would only be owning a half interest as tenants in common. They would not be owning right of survivorship or anything else. They're only buying half and would own it with the other individual. So the minimum is going to have to be well, half of the appraised value. It can be whatever you want it to be because it's based on the disposing on. agent's knowledge of the property. Okay, and our knowledge of the property is somebody else was living there. So if you buy the property, you got to either move in or own half of it with another person living there. Yes. So that to me would make it basically useless. But and the, and the realtor can't say, I mean, he doesn't know. There is, there is no answer. What is half of somebody you don't know's property worth? Uncharted territory. Right. As a residential so, so entity. I, so it's, it's too low. What does that do? Does that hurt burgers? I mean, it can be five hundred dollars, or it can be twenty thousand, or it's, it's that's correct. Do, does anybody know what it's going to cost us to have all the paperwork, everything done? Well, the estate would pay that. Oh, the estate's going to pay that. Okay. Pay that. Okay. Or the individual could pay it that's doing it. But, but if we, if that's part of the deal, then I don't know. Could be more than a couple, two thousand, maybe. Let's say we pay about well, five hundred dollars in appraisal. Well, I thought Lauren paid. I thought the estate would pay for it. Okay, I guess it. I think, yeah, I'm they're paid. Mm -hmm. And we didn't pay it, so. Okay. Yeah. I just saw that someplace I don't think they're coming to us, you have a lot of What do you think? I mean, I don't want to lose any money on it, but I don't know if we're making money on it. I do. We're making money on it. It's a terrible situation. <laughs> it is. I can't tell you. So, is the other person that's part of this, are they so interested in buying? Is the other person that's still there? Yeah, yeah that person owns half of it. Yeah, yeah, the other person owns half of it. I would think she, they would be there. Yeah. 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 She lives think, there. I would think yeah, she, are they, she lives Is there. she interested in well, yes. purchasing it? I mean, the sad thing about it. I she know. probably thought it was hers until he didn't have a will. Yeah. And yep. survivors. And that, that's the yep. Way. And with it being a sealed bed, yep. she's not going to have any idea. Correct. What she only knows what will. she can do. Right. Uh -huh. What cost are we going to have, Holly? Oh, yeah. The estate's paid for everything, or we don't have any cost. We should not, but. Put a thousand dollars on it in case we got some cost. Mm -hmm. That is so funny. And then I'll do the legal description saying how it's owned because that's what's yeah. very important. Yeah. So people know they're not bidding on a full 14 acres. I feel better that we, we can put it our own living on versus yeah. not that last game. So. But if somebody comes in and bids 25000 she's got to go over 25000 to get it. Is that correct? Well, here's your, it's a sealed bid. Oh, gosh. But now wait. Only lawmakers do this. So then you open them, you open them at a public meeting. And then at the public meeting, the one bidder can say, oh, I want to bid more because mm -hmm. that person bid this amount. Mm -hmm. So you can do that, or you can actually put it out to auction. And then we can have an auction. Yeah. So I have to pay an auctioneer, but Mr. Funny Man. Yeah. So, so yes, there's still a way for her to know. It's a quite a process. Okay. So first step, get the minimum bid. I'll write the legal description, and then you'll have to. Then you can pick the date you're going to publish it and the date you're going to end it and then put the date that the bids would be opened. 
Well, I guess you could have this. How long does it take you to do that? Um, in the week or so, first week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, four, 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 four. Let me see, you can publish next week, and then we could have, we could open the bids of our October 16th meeting. Mm -hmm. Does that give up time to pull all advertising? Okay, so we're going to publish it sometime next week. Yeah, we could advertise it next week, the week of the 25th, and then the bids have to come to the auditor's office by sealed envelope, right? Yep. So we could have those if you publish it, just say the 27th, mid, mid next week, and then you can put them, the bids have to be in by. Right. Oh, for the okay. meeting at 4 o'clock. So you can do October 6th. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. Well, it's by the 13th. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, yeah. October 13th will be open on Monday the 16th. It's be presented in the auditor's office by 4 p.m. on, what did you say, 13th? The 13th. Okay. 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 Now we've got to make a motion on what we agreed on price or price? We or should, yes. I make a motion. We set somebody up bill. somebody set the price. $1,000. Yep. $1,000. Yep. Yep. I'll second it. All right. Is there any other questions for me? All in favor. Motion carries to the end. Okay. Okay. Is that all old business you have on it? Mm -hmm. um, old business public? Okay, we need new business. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. No. Public? Okay. 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 Okay.